Hi, Physics One students. Welcome back to Block 5. And today what we're going to do is look at the third part of Block 5, and that's on potential energy. So the first thing we want to do is define potential energy, both conceptually and mathematically, and then calculate the change in potential energy due to two-dimensional internal conservative forces that may or may not vary with position, and do this via direct integration. Third, what we want to do is recognize when a force does work, when it contributes to a change in potential energy, or when it does neither of these. Fourth, we want to describe how different choices of systems or subsystems for a given problem will inf influence the terms in the work energy theorem. In other words, given a particular system and we decide to subdivide it in terms of various subsystems, how would this choice of subdivision actually influence the terms in the work energy theorem. So let's look at the equations to the right. The top equation is the work energy theorem, and it's just a statement of the relationship between the total work done by external forces on the system to the change in the total energy of the system. And the way we usually deal with this is we begin to unpack each side of the equation and express them in terms of simpler quantities. And those quantities then we can be rearranged algebraically to be able to solve for maybe desired questions. So the first thing we want to look at is the left-hand side of the equation. So that's basically the work definition that we've seen before. And it says that the work done by an external force is just given by the integral, so it's a path integral, that basically starts from some initial position vector si and ends at the upper limit of the integration at a final position vector sf. And within the process of integration along the path, a particular chosen path, what we would have to do is calculate the dot product of this external force at every location that the object happens to lie along the path and take that dot product with the differential element ds and that's a it's a, a differential vector along the path and it's tangent to the path so it's a displacement vector and next what we're going to do is define potential energy and here it's expressed as a change in potential energy. So U is potential energy. Delta U is given by this integral. And one thing we notice here on the left is that the subscript is not F external in this case, so it's actually F internal. So changes in potential energy are, are associated with internal forces to a system. And on the right-hand side, the definition looks a lot like the definition for work. It is a path integral, but now, of course, the difference is that the force that's involved is an internal force. And notably, we've got a minus sign on the outside. So we'll see in a few minutes what that means. So let's look back at the work energy theorem, and that's, of course, the equation at the center of the slide. And when we learn it, what we learn is that the work on the left-hand side of the equation is actually associated with external forces. The question that arises, what about internal forces within a system? So what effect do they have, or more precisely, how do they enter into the work energy theorem? So one way to sort of motivate this physically, but now with a simple analogy, is to think about an external force as maybe a cup of water that we would add to a large pail. The large pail, of course, represents here the total energy of the system. And then we might think of the subquantities, the, the quantities that make up the total energy. In other words, the kinetic energy to, to translation, kinetic energy of rotation, thermal energy, potential energy due to gravity, potential energy due to a spring internally, and then possibly other types of internal energy. So we can associate each one of those quantities that make up the total energy with a cup. So each one has a cup, and we can think of then the internal forces as 
having this effect of moving water from one cup to another. So in our analogy, we've associated an external force with a total amount of energy, or a total amount of water in this case, right, added to the system. And then an internal force is simply associated with moving water or energy around between the different cups, or really the different contributions to the total internal energy. So let's look at an example. So here we have a system that's a little bit more complicated than what we've seen in the past. So it's not a simple block on a single block on a slope sliding down or something like that. Instead, what we have is a full system off to the right that's comprised of a platform that we're gonna to take to be moving upward at some constant speed, a block B, and then a cylinder C, and then a spring that connects B and C. We're also gonna take the block to have uh, experience friction along this surface, the platform. So there's a frictional, kinetic frictional force between the block and the platform. The cylinder is going to have a static friction force between itself and the platform. And that'll allow us to talk about the cylinder as rolling without slipping. So just to review off to the left here, our equation, schematic equation describing our system, it just says that the system is made up of the platform, the block, the cylinder, and the spring. So now we're in a position to ask questions. So first, let's say that we begin with the block and the cylinder brought together very closely so that the spring is compressed. And then we let them go. And of course, the block will be pushed off to the left. The cylinder will roll off to the right. And of course, the platform, as before, as mentioned before, is moving upward at a constant speed. So the question, the first question is, let's focus on the force due to the spring that's attached um, between B and C. But what we wanna do is focus on what's happening to C, so the cylinder. So the question is, what does this force give rise to? So possibly a positive work done on the system, negative work done on the system, positive change of potential energy, or negative change of potential energy, or none of these. So let's stop here for a moment